plug and play. How come my plug and play ECU looks like this now? <laughs> How come there's bits and pieces hanging off it? If you've just bought an aftermarket ECU for your car, there's every chance in the world that you want it to do more than what your factory ECU could do. So you want more sensors, you may want oil pressure and oil temperature, you might want coolant temperature and pressure, you might want drive-by-wire in a car that drive-by-wire wasn't even thought of when this car was being built. So. That's the type of stuff I want to dive into today because I feel like it will be of value to people who are trying to do this themselves and yes, want that plug and play feeling, but they also want all of the coolness that you get when you spend a stupid amount of money on an ECU and all of the stuff that's going to actually protect your car and the reason people buy aftermarket ECUs. So I've added some extra bits and pieces here. I've got a, I've got two Bosch pressure temp sensors. So one on the oil, so oil pressure temp and coolant pressure and temp. I've obviously uh, scrapped the throttle position sensor and uh, fully pinned out the drive-by wire. And that's about it. The best way I found to do this was, as you can see, I've got my trusty laptop from 2000 BC here. What you wanna do is you open up the Haltech Nexus software, enable disable functions, and you go through and literally turn on and off every single thing that you would like. So as you can see there, my coolant pressure sensor, coolant temperature sensors on, drive-by wire is enabled, flex fuel composition sensor is enabled, um, as well as everything else, fuel pump, idle control, intake temp. As you go across, just tick everything that you have or want. So I have maxed out all of my inputs completely um, thanks to the drive-by wire. That, that's why you can see there none of the nitrous is enabled. I had stages one through six enabled there, but unfortunately it had to be cut because uh, the drive-by wire took priority. So after you do that, you will have a myriad of errors up here in the top right-hand corner and as well as down here. Now, one thing I should note is my car is based off the R33 GTR, so the base map for all of this came from the Haltech software and it was literally just the 33 GTR base map. So half of this, 90% of this was already done. All you've got to do is tweak it to how you want it to actually sit. If something is giving you an issue or you've got problems somewhere, it will literally flag it in red down this side. That doesn't sound like much, but that will take you the better part of a few hours. It did for me anyway, even if it's just getting your head around the Nexus software. After that, what you wanna do is you wanna come up to this tab just here, IO report. Click on this bad boy and it is going to show, you click show all if you really want to, it's going to show every single wire, every pin, every, color of the wire, everything you need to know about your particular harness that you've just made and how it's all set up. Um, you're only going to be looking at this screen after you've set up every sensor and everything that you're happy with on the screen and there are no error messages from the Haltech, so nothing has doubled up or nothing is unassigned or anything else like that. As I said, it will take you probably the better part of three hours. Um, after that, click print report have it on a couple bits of paper and then you are ready to rock and roll. Firstly, you could, yes, chop into your OEM harness and tap into the wiring from there. Probably not worth touching when you can splice into this. Now, I've just de-pinned it out of the uh, plug slot here and I will literally just connect the wire that's in the footwell of the passenger seat to this, uh, to this wire here. Thought I would do a real once over of what's actually going on here because it looks like craziness, but it's not. And if you're thinking about doing this yourself, you can do it. This wire here, okay? This one says, take my word for it, water tempered pressure. I know that this wire here, so it says two. So I know that two black, this wire here, is water temperature. And I know that because when I pinned it here on this, you can see next to it, I wrote water temperature 2B for two black. So what do we do then? We go, well, we need to get rid of the OEM water temperature sensor. So we go over to here and we find it down this column, coolant temperature sensor. 
B4. So you count four pins along on the correlating pin. This plug is that plug. So you count four pins along on that plug. As you can see, one, two, three, four from the right hand side is number B, is B4. That is this wire here. That then goes through here and goes to the ECU, which is the coolant temperature sensor. So we don't want to use what was normally going to go to the OEM harness. We want to use what's now going to our new sensor. So our old sensor is gone. So you literally get this and connect those together and you're done. Okay? That's one. Do that another 70 times. <laughs> <laughs> That's awfully bright, but I will admit this is getting a little bit gnarly and it looks a bit fed up, but it makes sense to me and that's what matters. I think that's where it can get daunting. You look at other people's projects and you go, shit, that looks crazy. When you're doing it, you kind of understand what's going on. It's organized chaos. So all that wires are here, the wide band is in here, flex fuel is in here, all my other sensors are in here, the drive-by wire is in here. I'm gonna get rid of the old ECU and really, it should be just connecting the dots. It's just gonna be time consuming. So, play on, sir. <laughs> pin going down here boys flex fuel sensor signal back so we just make our little jumper lead here out of the back of this we unlock our plug on the back here there's a little tab on the back of this one that needs to be just slightly pushed down so it unlocks I know I know I know that this goes into number seven which is that one there there we go. We clip that. Let's clip back in now. They are locked in. Flex fuel signal. And get our connector we just put in there. Slide him in. Get our crimpers. Always give him a good crimp. <sighs> Crimpy crimp. And always give him a good tuggy tug. Not going anywhere. That's it. Everything's pinned. Done. Turn it on. I'm gonna find the keys. <laughs> there we go. I'm just hoping not for smoke. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Let's get the laptop connected, see if we're getting some sensors in here. Couple days later, picking up exactly where we left off. So I've just turned the keys on. We're connected to the ECU now. We're talking. We've got a couple of errors. It's a good sign for me because the whole plug and play side of things, everything's working. As soon as I turn the key on, primed. The two faults that I've got right now are the oil temperature and the coolant temperature sensor. Now that's good because they're the two sensors, well both of those sensors and the pressure sensors are the sensors that I replace. So that's the stuff that I've repinned. So we'll start with oil temp. So now we go down to the wiring and pull up resistor is disabled at the moment. So if we enable that bad boy, 
Oh. <laughs> so straight away, I'm going to do the same thing for the corn. Let's go. Two from two. Oh, damn. <laughs> yes. I'm liking everything I'm seeing here, so. Um, all right, <laughs> she's oiled up, she's watered up. First thing I'm gonna do, I've got the cas unplugged. Build oil pressure before anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, baby. This one here was the one we're waiting to build pressure on, oil pressure obviously, before you try and start the motor. So we'll give it a kick. Look at that. Look at that. Cass is going back in. This bad boy is going to start. Let's go. Another new day because after what you just saw I spent a whole day trying to just sort out the software not that it was hard I just have never ever done it before case in point I spent like four hours with the car coughing and spluttering and just dumping fuel and just hating life because my idle control was still set to uh, whatever the 33 GTR base map comes with I didn't have it set to drive by wire. Turn it to drive by wire, <clears throat> kicks over. So, prepare yourselves. <laughs> are perfect so oil pressure 35 psi doing exactly what you want it to oil temp 50 degrees coolant temp 84 degrees perfectly obviously the wideband right now is running all sorts of rich um i did just take the spark plugs out before and they were well i don't think they like me very much <laughs> so i don't know if it says that in the haltech plug and play install manual but I don't think the passenger footwell is supposed to look like that <laughs> oh f me yeah good I love it he's <laughs> a bit smoky holy shit my little fan, my little dyno extraction fan is not, not helping. Um, that's where we're going to leave it, I think. If you're doing what I did, which is what I think 90% of the people will be doing, chopping in some sensors and doing all the rest of it, it fucking starts. <laughs> it's so good. And on top of all of that, if you really are stuck, just call them. They will help you. I've said this before and I've said this to everybody that talks to me about Haltech stuff. I seriously, you would think that I'm a promo guy. For so user friendly. I don't know what next step's going to be, but I reckon f***ing dino, baby. Let's go. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Ever since you shut the door on everything we knew, you're too late for love. Oh, how did I know that was going to happen? Help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just...